รายงานล่าสุดนะคะเป็นรายงานเศรษฐกิจเดือนกันยายนค่ะของธนาคารพัฒนาเอเชียหรือ ADB เปิดเผยว่าเศรษฐกิจในภูมิภาคเอเชียแปซิฟิกเติบโตไม่เท่าเทียมกันนะคะเรื่องนี้เป็นยังไงให้คุณมูลชัยร้อยฟังค่ะไม่เท่ากันแล้วก็เห็นแนวโน้มที่จะทิ้งห่างมากขึ้นเรื่อยๆตามขีดความสามารถในการแข่งขันเรื่องนี้น่าคิดเหมือนกันนะครับคุณผู้ชมครับอีกครั้งหนึ่งที่รายการเศรษฐกิจอินไซต์ไปสัมภาษณ์แหล่งข่าวระดับโลกมาเป็น Chief Economist ของธนาคารพัฒนาเอเชียหรือว่า ADB มองเศรษฐกิจจีนเติบโตแผ่วไม่ถึง 5% ต่อเนื่องถึงปีหน้าด้วยถึงขั้นบอกด้วยว่าเราอาจจะต้องหา growth engine หรือว่าเครื่องยนต์ผลักดันทางเศรษฐกิจใหม่ของเอเชียแต่จะเป็นจุดไหนไม่ง่ายที่จะตอบคำถามนี้รวมถึงท่าทีของธนาคารกลางต่างๆด้วยที่จะตอบรับกับแนวโน้มดอกเบี้ยของธนาคารกลางสหรัฐหรือว่าเฟดไปติดตามกันครับจากรายงานล่าสุดเดือนกันยายน2567ของธนาคารพัฒนาเอเชียหรือ ADB จะเห็นการเติบโตที่ไม่เท่ากันในภูมิภาคเอเชียแปซิฟิกอย่างชัดเจนซึ่งสะท้อนโอกาสและการปรับตัวที่ไม่เหมือนกันของแต่ละประเทศในยุคที่อุตสาหกรรมใหม่เติบโตโดย ADB คาดว่าเศรษฐกิจของภูมิภาคจะเติบโต 5% ในปีนี้ปรับเพิ่มจาก 4.9% และคงคาดการสำหรับปีหน้าที่ 4.9% เท่าเดิมเมื่อมองมาที่อาเซียน ADB คาดว่าจะเติบโต 4.5% ในปีนี้และ 4.7% ในปีหน้าขณะเดียวกันได้ปรับลดคาดการเศรษฐกิจของประเทศไทยเหลือเพียง 2.3% ในปีนี้และ 2.7% ในปีหน้าต่ำกว่าค่าเฉลี่ยของภูมิภาคอย่างชัดเจนรายการเศรษฐกิจอินไซต์จึงได้ไปสัมภาษณ์พิเศษอัลเบิร์ตพาร์คชีฟอีโคโนมิสของ ADB เพื่อฟังมุมมองเศรษฐกิจอาเซียนรวมทั้งปัจจัยต่างๆที่น่าสนใจ Vietnam and the Philippines and Southeast Asia we expect to grow at over 6% this year and Some other countries, Indonesia, Malaysia, are also growing quite well. Thailand has been a little bit slower this year. They've had some, you know, political uncertainty um, and uh, I think some loss of consumer and investor confidence. But uh, I'm sure that will get back on track. Tourism has been a, uh, has performed quite well here this year compared to last year. Are you worried about Thailand? I'm not worried about Thailand. I think. Uh, Uh, one thing that's happening to the region and that's creating growth momentum is a lot of um, investment in some of the more strategic rising industries in the world are moving to Southeast Asia. So, you know, electric vehicles, semiconductors, um, telecom, etc. And I think it's important for Thailand to try to get a piece of that action. Uh, I think it's helpful that. You know, with now some Chinese producers coming in, car producers, EV producers, they can reorient some of the auto parts supply chain uh, to fit the new rising EV. Hopefully, <laughs> so, and and not just the, you know, gas uh, engine vehicles, which you know I think over time uh, will will see declining shares of sales. Right. We know that ASEAN countries, including Thailand, for sure. Has closely related to China's economy, and when we talk about China's slowdown, who is the next growth engine or big brother for for our trade? I don't think we should overestimate like the effect of slowing growth in China because it's still 4.8, 4.5%. Those are very decent growth rates, and there's a rising middle class in China. Uh, so there'll be plenty of demand. Uh, I think that will support um, growth in the region. Uh, so it's not like their their going their growth is going to go negative. It'll be a contributor. But I do think that uh, all countries in the region should be trying to diversify their trade partners. And so, uh, if there is a, for instance, um, if if the trade war between the U.S. and China escalates, there could be more opportunities. To find markets in the U.S. and even China to replace the things that are now being more difficult to trade between the larger powers. I think uh, in today's world, where there's a lot of geo fragmentation and geopolitics, I think um, uh, all of the countries need to, you know, seize opportunities where they arise, but at the same time, really try hard to maintain open multilateral trade and investment, because really that kind of pragmatic view of Uh, international economic relations has really served Asia Pacific very well for many decades in supporting growth and development. 
สิ่งที่ถือเป็นเครื่องยนต์ขับเคลื่อนเศรษฐกิจหลักของเอเชียมาโดยตลอดคือจีนซึ่งมาวันนี้เศรษฐกิจไม่ร้อนแรงเท่าเดิมแล้วถ้าอย่างนั้นเขตเศรษฐกิจใดจะเป็นความหวังใหม่และเศรษฐกิจจีนจะกลับมาร้อนแรงได้อีกหรือไม่นี่คือคำตอบจาก ADB What well, I think? think the sources of growth are always changing, but uh, in our most recent uh, update to our forecast for the region, we emphasize that exports actually are recovering this year pretty strongly, and it's helping quite a few uh, exporting, especially high-tech exporters in the region, uh, grow faster than we had earlier expected. So we've slightly upgraded our forecast for the Asia Pacific region in terms of its growth rate. Right. We now expect it to grow at 5% this year and 4.9% next year. Um, but since the pandemic, we've also seen kind of a pretty uh, robust recovery of domestic demand in many countries in the region. So it's this combination of domestic consumption, domestic demand, continuing to strengthen, and an export rebound for quite a few countries this year. Right, five percent of growth for Asia sounds really good, but for uh, ADB's latest report, four point eight percent for China. And next year, 4.9 or something. Why China just maybe fail to reach 5%? Well, yeah, our forecast has been pretty consistent now for a while at 4.8% this year and 4.5% next year. And if you took that further out, most of the research we've done would suggest that China will continue to slow gradually. And you know, it's because they're facing quite a lot of headwinds. They've uh, they're they're aging rapidly. Uh, the population. Um, there's been a pretty steady productivity slowdown that's been occurring over time. You know, they've invested a lot for many years, but the marginal returns to those investments are declining. And yet, there are some bright points. We know that China is really leading in some of the new uh, tech sectors, new energy sectors, electric vehicles, batteries, solar. These are all growth areas, and China is really at the forefront of those technologies. Mm. How do you see the economy of China in next five years? It is still bright. Well, China's uh, about uh, represents about half of GDP in the region, a little bit less. So it's going to be extremely important. We know that China is really connected to many of the other countries in the region through supply chains, through uh, foreign investment, um, including here in Thailand, where there's been quite a bit of uh, recent uh, investment from coming from China. Um, So they're going to be important for for the region for a, for quite a long time. Um, at the same time, we do see growth in China slowing gradually over time. Uh, whether you say this year, next year, or even after that, um, that that seems to be a process which had started well before even the pandemic, where we we saw growth rates. You know, you have to remember, China used to grow at double digit rates, right? Yeah. And now it's been gradually coming down, and we just see that trend uh, continuing. Um, it's maybe not so surprising. I mean, uh, for its level of development, China's growth rates are pretty normal. It's just that compared to where it was before, it's much lower. China had been a really positive outlier, and so I think um, you know that could reflect a, a number of reasons. But um, that's how we see it going forward. So the momentum for growth in Asia will shift from China. To other countries in the region. อีกประเด็นที่สําคัญของเศรษฐกิจการเงินโลกคือท่าทีของธนาคารกลางสหรัฐหรือเฟดที่ปรับลดดอกเบี้ยนโยบายแรงเกินคาดที่ 0.5% เป็นการส่งสัญญาณยุคดอกเบี้ยขาลงนี่ถือเป็นข่าวดีหรือข่าวร้ายของเอเชียกันแน่ Let's talk about the Fed. We have seen the rate cut right 0.5% and what do you expect more from Fed this year? Well, first of all, the Fed reducing interest rates by five basis points is good news for the region mm-hmm. because it allows central banks in the Asia Pacific more space if they want to lower their interest rates and support investment, um, which is good for 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 economic growth uh, in the region. Um, I think we, like many others, expect the Fed to continue. They're just starting a rate cutting cycle. The the numbers out of the U.S. Uh, economy look like uh, it could show weakness for a little while, and that will uh, lead the Fed to continue cutting. So we expect at least another half basis point this year, and maybe a full interest point reduction over the course of next year. You know, it'll it's not clear what the sequence or timing will be, because the Fed is currently really watching the data as it come in comes in, and will adjust accordingly. But bro- 
broadly, the trend is definitely going to be in that direction. And so as a result, I think we should also uh, expect to see uh, countries in the Asia Pacific also cutting their interest rates, central banks cutting their rates. Although that, again, will vary across countries depending on the rate of inflation, depending on the fiscal capacity and the debt levels, et cetera, many concerns. But broadly, I think we should see that everywhere. And that should be generally good for growth in the region. Right. Don't you think that Fed is working behind the curve? Do you? Oh, I, I don't think so. I mean, I think they've been acting. Uh, I mean, they pretty much told everyone that they were going to react to data. And so when data comes in on inflation and employment, the expectations about Fed policy are determined really by the market. And then we, we've seen really immediate adjustments occurring in financial markets and financial conditions in the region. And so when the Fed finally did make its announcements, a lot of that adjustment had already, had already been baked in to some extent. But there was still, of course, continued movement once people saw the Fed had actually made uh, this decision. Uh, but I think they're about where they should be. โจทย์ที่สำคัญของโลกคือการเปลี่ยนผ่านสู่ความยั่งยืนรับมือกับการเปลี่ยนแปลงสภาพภูมิอากาศ ADB ในฐานะองค์กรระหว่างประเทศก็ยังเดินหน้าสร้างความร่วมมือกับภาครัฐและเอกชนท่ามกลางความท้าทายรอบด้านที่ยากจะคาดเดาต่อไป The Asian Development Bank is now positioning itself to be the climate bank for Asia Pacific so many of the things we are now doing is focused on addressing this global challenge um, and Uh, that ranges from giving advice to governments on uh, climate change strategy, on um, putting together plans uh, to reduce carbon emissions, um, and then of course to finance a range of pro projects uh, that will create more uh, resilient infrastructure to climate events uh, that will um, help uh, accelerate the shift to renewable energy sources And a lot of what we're trying to do now is also to uh, work with the private sector and leverage private sector investment in to really bring more resources to bear on the transition uh, to net zero. เศรษฐกิจจีนยังจะสําคัญกับเอเชียต่อไปแน่นอนครับแต่ว่าก็จะต้องกระจายความเสี่ยงหาโอกาสสําหรับคู่ค้าใหม่ๆสําหรับประเทศไทยแล้วก็อาเซียนต่อไปด้วยครับคุณผู้ชมคุณจวิรัตครับขอบคุณที่ติดตามรับชมรายการเศรษฐกิจอินไซต์นะครับฝากคุณผู้ชมกด subscribe กดกระดิ่งกดไลค์กดแชร์ทุกช่องทางออนไลน์ของ TNN ช่อง16ด้วยนะครับเพียงเท่านี้คุณผู้ชมจะไม่พลาดกับรายการสดและคอนเทนต์ดีๆที่เรามีเสิร์ฟให้คุณผู้ชมตลอดวันครับ